So, Honkai Impact is going to add quite a bunch of Genshin and Star Rail inspired additions and changes with its new big overhaul. In this video, we're going to look at the top 10 new features inspired by Hoyo's other games. Let's start with map exploration. In the new Honkai Impact, we will be able to explore an ever-expanding map full of chests, puzzles, side quests, and challenges. To be fair, Honkai Impact already had some explorable maps in the past, such as APHO, Colostin, Elysian Realm, or Moonbase. But those were always more self-contained and only relevant for a specific story chapter. Meanwhile, this new map will even replace the old-school mobile game menu with an on-map approach, like in Star Rail, so you will never have to leave the map to access other game modes. This is the first time we will get an ongoing open world, where the maps will keep expanding as more and more story gets released. Also with the game's engine update, the maps will look as lively and buzzing as never before. The new map will introduce weekly bosses you can challenge twice a week for abundant rewards. There will also be material stages added, one where you can farm artifacts on relics, more about those later, and one for upgrade materials. There will be different difficulty modes available with higher difficulty having a higher chance for rarer materials. Like in Genshin and Star Rail, higher difficulties unlock depending on your level. There will be no resin stamina system for those, but instead you get two run attempts every day, which can stack up to six at most. Something really amazing I wish Hoyo's other games would implement is that you can choose to quick start all these right from the map icon. No need to teleport to a different map or walk to the locale first. Very convenient and comfy. It might surprise some of you who don't play Honkai Impact on PC, but yes. Back when Honkai was ported to PC, we only had pure keyboard controls with game controllers being an alternative option. But with the Honkai overhaul, finally, there will be proper mouse and keyboard controls. So if you are coming from Star Rail or Genshin, you can enjoy the game with a much more familiar control scheme. In my opinion, this was long needed, and even though I play mainly with a controller, I can imagine many people enjoying this one. Yes, Honkai Impact will finally have an own self-insert character whose gender and name we can freely choose. In Honkai Part 1, the focus was mainly on Kiana and her friends, telling the story like watching an anime, where the player passively observes. To be fair, the male playable character in APHO was freely nameable and kinda acted like a self-insert character, and the Captain vs. Event stories had us actively involved in the story as the captain. But now with Honkai Part 2, we will finally participate in the main story and live in the same world as a character called the Dream Seeker. We can even change our gender afterwards and won't be forever locked into our decision. And look, this is gonna be our own player apartment. It's a bit empty right now, but you can purchase decorations and make it more lively and comfy. We can even purchase many of the BGM, including all the banger vocal songs and set it as our home BGM. Multiple interfaces implemented with the Great Overhaul are greatly inspired by Hoyo's other games. If you come from Genshin or Star Rail, screens like the quest log will look very recognizable. You can immediately see which are main story quests, dailies, side quests, and time-limited event quests. New weapons released from the Part 2 update onwards will be able to be refined with duplicates to make its passive buffs better but this will be much easier than in other Hoyo games. If you don't know Honkai Impact well, signature weapons here are always four stars, and you will upgrade them to five stars and lastly, six stars through upgrading. There is also a hard pity to get the signature weapon after 60 pulls. No 50-50 or 75-25. On top of that, for four star A rank character signature weapons, their weapon refinements will be farmable without requiring pulling for duplicates. And lastly, 
there will be only refinements up to level 3 with level 1 being the base level, meaning you only need up to two duplicates to get the maximum possible potential out of the weapon. There are also a couple of really insane gear banner changes, making it incredibly easy to pull for gear, but more about that later. The new exploration map will feature a game mode called Sea Mirage, which consists of 12 stages, usually feature two waves of enemies, and there are three stars you can achieve in every stage as sub-goals. In order to get all three stars, you need to clear the stage fast enough and have no character dying. Sounds familiar? Yeah, that was my first thought too. But before you let your abyss or memories of chaos PTSD get to you, let me make this clear this won't be as painful as what it was inspired by. This abyss mode is part of the part two story exploration map, which means that it is designed as a challenge for the default story characters and mechanics. If you level up, use the right gadgets and have at least some gold artifacts relics leveled to max, you should be able to clear 36 stars no problem. Knowing how to properly play the characters and how to exploit enemy weaknesses will give you by far the biggest advantage in this mode. Also right now there is no indication that this will refresh with different cycles, so it may as well be a one-time challenge, like those permanent memories of chaos levels for Belobog and Sanjo Lofu in Star Rail. Now on to the top three. For number three, I chose to put those really, really smooth and nice looking animations when you go through a character's equipment and skills menus. Those are likely inspired from Hoyo's upcoming Zenless Zone Zero game, and I'm all here for it. Sadly, but understandably, those will only be added for Part 2 Onwards characters and not be added to all 80 plus old ones. My pick for number 2 are Creature Aspects, which are Honkai Impact Part 2's artifacts or relics. Yeah, you knew this would be coming. To all the Honkai Impact players, you can lower your pitchforks. This won't replace Stigmata's, and this won't be relevant for any of the competitive modes, such as Memorial Arena or Super String Dimension. Creature aspects are only for the Part 2 story map and its related game modes. Also, you won't need to grind sets for every single character. Instead, you just equip three pieces, which will give your whole team those stat increases and effects. Also, there are only two different sets for now a health set no one uses, and an attack set everyone uses. And while there are random substats, you are not required to have god tier rolls on every piece in order to clear content like Sea Mirage. So overall, this implementation of the artifact system is very casual friendly, and as someone who struggles with artifacts in Genshin since over three years, I approve of the way Honkai Impact uses it here. My favorite Hoyo games inspired change are the banner changes. Honkai Impact never had a 50-50, so a 5-star S rank guarantee after 100 pulls was always a true guarantee to get the banner character 100%. With Honkai Impact's overhaul, this hard pity will be lowered to 90 to make it match other Hoyo's games, but we will still keep the no 50-50 thing. This change will truly make Honkai Impact Hoyo's most generous game, beating even Hokai Gakuen, where you can select any banner item after 100 pulls. On top of that, the game will get even more insane changes to its gear banners. For anyone unfamiliar with how Honkai Impact's gear works, instead of artifacts or relics, you need a set of three stigmatas, where there is always a signature set designed for a specific character that's on the character's gear banner together with the signature weapon, and then there's multiple F2P farmable stigmatas. On gear banners, you had the weapon and signature stigmatas being on uprate, similar to Star Rail and Genshin banners, where it becomes kind of a 50-50 to get an uprate four-star item or any of the off-rate ones. But with the part two overhaul, the gear banner will finally get much more free to play friendly and all off-banner gear will be removed from its pool, which means that on, for example, Senadina's gear banner, all four-star pulls will only be either her signature weapon or any of the three signature stigmata, and you will never get anything else. This change means that the base drop rate for a signature weapon will be 2.48%, and the base rate for a signature stigmata will be a whopping 14.59%. Of course, also every guaranteed 4-star you get after 10 pulls can either only be the signature weapon or one of the three signature stigmatas. 
The hard pity for the weapon will be at 60, but you are much, much more likely to already get a few before even reaching that. I also want to mention that, starting from part two, all signature stigmata will optionally also be craftable, so signature stigmatas won't be a gotcha-only thing anymore, and not getting a specific stigmata piece will never be an issue again. And on top of that, with every new character, we will get one free selectable signature stigmata box too, making it even more easy to full signature gear your characters. I can only repeat myself. With all this Honkai impact, easily became Hoyo's most generous and F2P friendly game. So, this was it. My top 10 features and changes of the big Honkai impact overhaul that were inspired by other Hoyo games. Do you agree with the order? Are there other features you would have liked to be included? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you like Honkai Impact related content, feel free to subscribe. We also have a newly opened Discord, which is linked in the description. With that said, Lucy out.